Hey there, curious minds. Today we are diving into the fascinating world of ethical philosophies, specifically consequentialism and its rockstar sibling, utilitarianism. Now, don't worry if these sound like heavy terms. I'm here to break it down with simple examples that hit close to home. So let's talk consequentialism. This philosophy puts the spotlight on the consequences of our actions as the ultimate judge of their mortality. In simple terms, if an action leads to good outcomes, it's morally right. Now with the consequentialism family, we have got utilitarianism as a standout member. Utilitarianism, championed by Jeremy Bentham and refined by John Stuart Mill, is like the rock star of ethical theories. It says the best moral action is the one that maximizes happiness or pleasure. What we call utility. Think of it as aiming for the greatest good for the greatest number of people. To make this more concrete, let's rewind to the 19th century when Bentham introduced the hedonistic calculus. It's like a happiness math equation to determine if an action produces more pleasure than pain. Now let's bring this theory into the realm of media. Consider a newspaper publishing a graphic photo of a car accident. From a utilitarian perspective, it might cause harm to the victim's family, but it's deemed important to inform the public and prevent risky behavior. It's a balancing act of maximizing the greater good. But hold on, not everyone is cheering for utilitarianism. Enter John Halls, a heavyweight critic. Rawls argues for justice above utility. His two principles of justice prioritize basic freedoms, equal rights, and the societal benefits, emphasizing justice for all, not just the majority. Rawls even gives us a cool thinking tool, the veil of ignorance. Imagine making decisions without knowing your age, gender, or background. It helps us arrive at fair choices, considering the perspective of the least well-off. And here is Thomas Jefferson chiming in. He warns against the tyranny of the majority. Too much focus on what's best for the majority might neglect the rights and well-being of the minorities. It's a cautionary note that sparks some serious ethical pondering. Now let's fast forward to our digital age. The rise of technology has undeniably empowered us, but it comes with the potential pitfalls. The concept of cyber-centrism, where efficiency trumps moral values like trust and privacy, raises concerns. We are also confronted with the knowledge gap, creating inequalities in access to information. As we navigate the ethical landscape of media in our modern world, we'll keep exploring various ethical theories like virtue theories in our upcoming sessions. Stay tuned and remember, ethics isn't just a buzzword. It's a compass guiding our choices in this ever-evolving digital landscape. Until next time, stay curious.